Hello everyone and welcome back to Cronus Place Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Today, Edgeworth confessed in the middle of court. Good job, Edgeworth. I just wanted to I just wasted all of your efforts. Yeah, you're a dick. Dots. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean you killed your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, Detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. That's just not accurate, dog. That's just not true. Like, it was an accident, right? It's just not true. This is crazy! Just crazy! Nick, what are you doing? I'm about to strangle Edgeworth. Oh. I was just reading the, the, the third. I was just reading through the court record once again more. We're getting my case ready. Your case for what? Huh? Was that it obvious? I'm gonna prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it in court, like an idiot. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in the court records. In any case, tighten your belt. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. Hey, also, can we, um, take a bat to Von Conver's head because he was an accomplice with the Richard Hammond murder? And uh, I feel like we're just kind of grossing over that, uh, glossing over that point. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge? Miles Edwards has admitted to his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, through pointless, let, uh, though pointless, let the defense do the cross-examination. The statute of limitation on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it is unconventionally for me, though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the books. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, Your Honor. Von Calmer, you knew this was going to happen, didn't you? Very beginning. Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, did you, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth? Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter for the court! When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Can you maybe explain that a little bit? Because to be quite honest, I don't know what you're talking about. Please! Please! Uh, the DL6 incident. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck and tra trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. It is the same gun, oh my god! I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted him to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then I screamed. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The auction in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Ah! The same claim Mr. Yogi has made! Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. But why did you go to your father's trial? What was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost, and Mr. Von Kama was the prosecuting attorney. Mr. Von Kama, you were handling that case? It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details! That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem in Von Kama's evidence. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator. Yes, myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as the time passed, no one came to help. My father, Mr. Yogi, lost their composure. 
Uh, what did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then... We're gonna have to present the gun at some point, right? What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff's, Jan Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up. What happened next? Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick, I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. The gun fired once. Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they have echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream? It was a terrible scream. I remember to this day. Okay. So we'll press this one, and then we're going to look at our... our if this doesn't advance, we'll look at our uh, court records. Because they definitely seemed like something about a scream was important there. To this day. Yes, I can't pract I can practically hear it now. I doubt it will ever f I will ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. But I don't know what it means. I better find out quick. Okay. So... One... You don't have to type it all out. Yeah, there we go. Scream. So, scream here, and scream back there. There was a clue sound back on the other one. Uh, let's check out... this. Ooh, fired twice. That could be it. Okay. But why are you... Oh, shit. I... I pressed the wrong button. I pressed the wrong button. I meant to press B, I pressed Y. Single gunshot. There you go. Okay. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at the file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness testimony. You do end up dragging that file, don't you? I won't accept this evidence unless you can tell me what page it is on! Which page contradicts Miles' Edgeworth's testimony? It was the victim data, yes? Probably should have checked that. Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly, the murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot, yet the murder weapon was fired twice? The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, I'm surprised. I'm sure you're aware. This incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did not did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Yeah, what? Hmm, I see, I see. Judge, you're an idiot. You have a boy. No, he doesn't. Mr. Wright? The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy, at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with this case? Sure! Uh, yes, Your Honor. I, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible! Now, now, Mr. Von Kammer, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Barrow, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. 
Do you have any evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident? Oh. No? So we can't use this again, right? Because we already just used that. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, that works. There's, there's a bullet hole there. And the bullet was lodged in the dude's heart, right? That's what the, the thing said. So it would have to be a missed shot. Look at the photograph. <laughs> Look at... See, Edgeworth? You're your dad. There's a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim laying there is Gregory Edgeworth. That proves the murder weapon was fired twi twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it! So, let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please! Are you that stupid? Because I'm beginning to think that you actually are unqualified to be a goddamn judge. You goddamn moron. That should be obvious. The contradiction is there. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor! Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol, yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired the second shot. Order, order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? What are you talking about? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired, you idiot! One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door! Remember that defen the defendant lost consciousness after the shot was he fired rang out? He didn't fire it, he threw a gun and it fired accidentally. But anyways, in conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. Thoughts? I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got, the, uh, got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary. That's on page one. Look at what is written there. That a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had, in, had indeed been fired twice, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. Hmm, he does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory's life was the one fired by his own son. This is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made the bullet hole in the door. Are you... What? Order! I, I will have an order of fries. Mr. Red has proven one thing to us quite clearly, that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Kama says, the second bullet fired was not found. It's highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked this second bullet bullshit. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense claim. Tis, tis, tis. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I... It looks like I was wrong. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then my conjectures are for nothing. N no no but you said you'd do it! You said you'd get Redworth declared innocent! I'm sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought that two bullets had been fired. Two shots had been fired! The bullet was lodged in his heart! I was so certain of it, I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else, who had fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years! Nick? Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Myers Ellsworth. No, it was fired by the gun hitting the floor, but sure. Precisely! I'd like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. 
Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention? Yes, I did. Oh no! He's accepted the guilt! Very well. Statue of Limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth has run runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce the verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now! Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court! There are so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words! Mr. Wright. I have an objection! I think. Objection! Your Honor, I... I object! Tis, tis, tis. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object, hmm? Ugh. Nick! I don't know. This case is perfect. Oh no. Gah. It must exist. The second bullet. What? What did you just say? That did nothing! The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce any answers from Mr. Wright. Bullshit it won't! Hmm. I, uh, I just heard a ghost. The second bullet, it, it existed. What? But you just heard proof that it did not exist. No, I heard someone saying it didn't exist. That's not proof. I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. I, it's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the murderer! The murderer? Then tell us, just who is this murderer? I still thinking about that one. Hmm. Okay. I'm assuming it's Von Kalmer, right? It like has to be. I don't know how he did it. Why, Kronos, why? Because why would he set up an elaborate goddamn murder plot for Yanni Yogi to do? And not have any involvement with it, right? And apparently Gregory Edgeworth had, I guess, showed him up in court a little bit by saying he falsified evidence and the judge believed it, even though he won. Um, he tased us the other day, which is pretty fucked up, to be quite honest. Could have a heart condition, could have killed me. So yeah, it's gotta be him. But how'd he do it? Like, if we were locked in a goddamn elevator? Through the outside of the... The elevator? But how would you do it in the pitch black? Well, anyways. So the criminal took the second bullet, but why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a straight bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for the bullet? Um... Well, if we're thinking it's Von Kammer, he didn't need... He didn't need to find it, right? He could have just removed it from evidence later, yeah? Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for it, the stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Um... Bah! The murderer had no reason to take the bullet! You don't want to admit it, then, but it's true! Irk. He had to take it. Had to take it. The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. <laughs> Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Sorry, I'm just hallucinating. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But the murderer had to take it from that scene. Had to, Mr. Wright. What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer. Just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? That's not like you could perform surgery right there, you know? Hey, everyone in court. That's not the stupidest shit that's been said in this courtroom, by the way. It's dumb, sure. But wait a second, maybe it's right. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that really, really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot. 
and they left with the second bullet still inside them, thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Uh, yeah? I guess that's how it works, yeah. But there's no there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from the elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside, yes. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picked up the pistol at his feet and throws it. That's... that's just poor gun protocol. The pistol discharges and the bullet. The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the, deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded! There was no murderer! Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edwards was dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! That must have been quite a shock for Gun Calmer. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yeah, but what an unusual event for the man. Okay. So he went to recover from being shot? Is that what you're saying? That was the first and the last vacation he would take in many years of prosecuting. What if Uncommon didn't take the vacation because he was shot, but took it because he was injured? Oh, but, but took it because he was injured! Which would mean, it could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident! He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth! It was Dracula! Oh man, something wrong, Mr. Edgeworth? You seem dazed. No, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from the outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? Yeah, just in case, though, I'm just gonna, like, really save, like, right down there. There we go. Uh, yeah, say it! Your Honor! There is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? V -v 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 Ugh, my hands are shaking. The what? Von Kammer! Von Kammer? You mean the Von Kammer, the prosecutor, the one standing right over there. Bah! You don't object. Huh! I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous upburst of with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months after star uh, starting the day after the incident, yeah. Yet you pride yourself on the perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without a reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the event. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where would I? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Ugh. Nick. Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth. I know Von Kammer, perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Grr, nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Kammer pull the bullet up by himself? That would hurt. That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull out bullets out by yourself. Hey, I've seen Rambo and other action movies. Don't you ruin that dream of mine. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? Tis, tis, tis. Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Oh my god. Yeah. Alright, Von Kammer, I'll prove it. 
And I'll even use evidence. I know how much you like it so much. What? What? The evidence that proves Von Kammer was shot is... Von Kammer is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where's that bullet now? I think it's unlikely that Von Kammer performed surgery on himself. You... you don't mean... I do! There is a possibility that bullet is still inside Von Kammer! Is that even possible? For all these years? Well, there's only one way to find out. We could use this metal detector that I stole from the police office! Well, Von Kammer, I'm gonna run this over you and see what we find. Hey, why, why are you sweating bullets, dog? Oh, wait, we're not actually sweating bullets yet. I refuse! You refuse. But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet's still inside you. Order! Order! Your Honor, the defense requests that we are we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for suspicion of this trial. This is an evasion of pro oh, suspension of this trial. This is an evasion of privacy. The statute of limitation runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. <laughs> Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Kammer, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. That's the spirit. Dots? Beep, beep, beep! It reacted! Something is inside his right shoulder! The bullet! Dots! Mr. Von Kammer? You! It was you! I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it was nothing to do with this incident! What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder was no relation to the DL6. Oh, shit, dog! Ballistic testing! We can get that shit done! We're gonna cut open your shoulder, we're gonna pull that bullet out, and we're gonna take that bullet we have in our pocket from Maya. Thank you, Maya. And we're gonna test it. But, Mr. Von Kalmer, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything! It's Mr. Wright who has proved something. Not I! Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet is in Von Kalmer's shoulder from the DL6 incident? Of course he can't! You don't have any evidence of the DL6 evidence! That's because he took it out of the records room. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime! So sorry, Mr. Wright! No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Kalmer. What? what? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. Take that. That's a bullet. Where did you get that? This is a bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gre Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings attacked. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings, the fingerprint of the gun. All bullets fired from the gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern, unless the bullet's destroyed when, like, hitting something. But still, by examining the markings, you can still tell which weapons fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edward's heart. And the other, Mr. Von Kammer's, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We can analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings match, we would know that, that both bullets have been fired by the, from the same gun. The very same pistol, in other words, the murder weapon that killed Greg, uh, Gregory Edgeworth. Ah! Mr. Mr. Von Kalmer, you 
you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Oh, and we're not using anesthesia or, like, painkiller. We're just going to rip it out. He's having a heart attack? That scream. I heard that scream before. Wait, I know! Help, yeah. Stop breathing, you're breathing my air. Get away! Get away from my father! It's that scream I heard at the elevator. 15 years ago, Von Calmer, it was you who screamed! Mr. Von Calmer. Edgeworth! Only you could dare defy me! So it was you. You and your father are my curse! Your father shamed me with the penalty on my record! And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! I'll bury you! I'll bury you with my bare hands! Death! Death! And taxes! Fifteen years earlier... Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. Von Calmer, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never th would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I... I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth! It was a shock like none I have ever known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black, like my heart. The lights must have gone out, like for my eyes. I went onto the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. I was in pain! A horrible, burning pain in my shoulder! I loved it. But then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened my eyes. Oh, before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from the oxygen desperation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. In his last moment, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Who had have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge! What? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it! Very well. It appears that we have come to a very, a very long way to end this, this maze. Yeah? Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This course finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. Yay! That is all. This court is adjourned. So is Von Kama going to be arrested? Maybe like, hit with a bat across his knees a few times? Nick! Nick! We did it! Did you see his face? Von Kama looked even paler than usual, and that's rare for a vampire! He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick! Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed! <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd have that. We'd had it. I know. I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good, good memory. Dots. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah. I. I'm not sure how to say this. I know. I know. Try. Thank you. I. I see. Th thank you. Right. Oh, you're welcome. Now pay me. 
pay me for defending you in court. I have bills to pay, Edgeworth. I think you could have done better than that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Oop! Amazing, pal! You pulled through just like I thought you would! I'll never forget this! I owe you a pal! And tonight, let's party! Dinner's on me! We'll get it from the dollar menu at McDonald's! But who cares? Did they still have that? That was a good dollar menu back in the day. I know they raised the price of some of that shit. I haven't been to McDonald's in a while. Oh, actually, back at this time, they would have, like, the dollar menu, right? Because wasn't this game made in, like, 2004 or something like that? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should have a lesson. You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm, I, I see. Ahem. Oop. I feel foolish. <laughs> Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. Uh, it's been 15 years since I've heard Edgeworth this unguarded. Hi, hey, y'all. Lotta! Y'all did were great in there! Thank you! Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent the from the very start, of course. Just look at you, you wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Oh yeah, well, let's buy, let, let, let bygones be bygones, yeah? Speaking of which, what are you doing here, Lotta? <laughs> Me? Uh, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. You went back to college within a day's time? Two days time? That's amazing. Really, that's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? <laughs> it's over, Nick! My life is over! Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, it's not long. I'm not long for this world. You don't look sick. It's Kance. She's she's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. She's leaving me behind. Should have seen that coming. Yo, Edgie. There you are. <sighs> yes, here I am. <laughs> Congrats, Edgie. Here, a little gift from my from for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Hair butts. You come along way along. <laughs> you come along tonight too. My treat, pal. Huh? Oh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick, that's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police hawk for prison food, right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Probably. Right. Yeah, what's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not th that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? <laughs> what a weird amount. <laughs> so it was Larry that stole it. I mean, it's not little, but it's not a lot either. 38, exactly. Nick! Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? 38? No. No! Larry, it was you? What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But, does it, does that, but that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyways. What an idiot! <laughs> he, then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I was never good at history. Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really, right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. <laughs> well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events. Edgeworth. Huh? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> what does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of you, what you two did. And I hate this job. It's hell. Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. Death! The death sentence for both of you! Man, if only I'd known I'd become a prosecutor! The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor and bought to punish myself. 
If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney. After all, Edgeworth. I'm just switch. I want to switch, right? Yes. Hey, y'all, line up. I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time. Let's go. And after that, dinner's on me. Figure I'll keep the episode, this part of the trial, all in one. Uh, I know there's another case after this. Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated at Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in, de in detention. Why? But why? Oh, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh. It's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Huh. What's this? A letter? Better have money in it from Edgeworth. Good morning, Nick! You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you. It made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium and in training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. I was useless. So I decided to go back to my training. Actually, you kind of saved the day with that bullet. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say to you your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Oh, that's sad. G goodbye What time is it? Gah! The first trains from the mountains have already left. To the station! To the Batmobile. I mean, sure, she needs training, obviously. She should finish her training. She should also, if she wants to be a lawyer, she should go to legal school. But at the same time, law school, legal school, whatever, I guess I'm too late. Hey! Nick! Nick! Maya! So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Yeah, hold it! Objection! Wait. What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yeah, only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Uh, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. And I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped on Calmer, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. No, you no, you actually did. You actually you got the bullet that helped. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that helped and you helped. Evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. Here you go. Take that! Take that! Cheer up! The bullet! Von Calmer was convinced he had taken all the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This this was the bullet that put an end to Von Calmer. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thank you, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I mean, you're fun to have around, so hopefully you return in the future games. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run to that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Huh. I don't know about that. No, she's probably right, dog. So, uh, this is it. See you soon, Maya. I mean, you can keep in touch, too. Aw. Thanks, Nick. Go have fun under a waterfall, I guess. Sorry your sister's head got bashed in on the second trial. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Like Goku and Yamcha. Ha! Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Your Honor. Uh-oh. I got a bad feeling about this. Objection! Uh, oh, so we're at the... The credits. Okay. So, I know there's another trial at this. We're gonna go to that... I know there was some... Hey, pal. Oh, he came to the... Oh, Jesus. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Vibrating controller. <laughs> I would like to see that, actually. I think he was embarrassed. 
it's not that strange. He's been living in a shell for 15 years. But yeah, there's another episode of this. We're going to go into it. I know there was some talk in the comment sections about well, should I wait till after I finish, I think, the next game to come back and do it. Or maybe even the, the, the trilogy and do that. Um, he's working at Cheese Stop. Missy's a nice lady. Oh, God. You're dating another model that's going to leave you high and dry. Everyone has a type, I guess, but still. Maybe find a different type. Or at least try to find someone who actually cares about you. Oh, <laughs> bullshit pain. But yeah, no, um, so we're, we'll go on to, I guess I can just talk, talk about it now, seeing how it's the credits. But yeah, I really enjoyed the game. And I'm sure the next trial is going to be enjoyable as well. Some of the stuff they come up with is just insane. <laughs> sometimes but you know it's a game it's a fantasy game but it's still kind of insane like that whole last trial was fun and intriguing and interesting but the whole like DL6 trial being added on to it instantly and like before was like oh if we don't figure this out <laughs> it was like we were trying to like show that Edgeworth wasn't involved with DL6 before the trial even took place like we, like we knew, like we read the script that we were going to have to do that. Anyway, it was just kind of funny. Um, but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to the other games. Uh, after this one ends, after the next trial, I'm not sure the next case, how long that's going to be. It's probably be... <sighs> how many episodes are we at? We're at 33 today? Oh, she's talking nonstop again. Um... So how many how many episodes are a trial? Probably like we've had four trials, thirty three episodes. So like four ish episodes. So we're not that far away from the finale. But then again, I'm not sure how long the next one is. I guess it it's something that was added uh, after uh, in the after the DS version, and it actually involves like. Uh, mechanics from later games. I so thought you were going to be a murderer, Penny. I pegged you as the goddamn murderer for that case from the start. God, happy or not, you want to trade some cards? But yeah, no, uh, we're, we're, we're coming on the end. When we do end, I mean, it's, we're not going to go right into the second game of each. Uh, if, you're, if you're new to the channel, generally speaking, uh, when I finish a series, I don't like to jump right into the next series, game in the series. I like to take a little bit of a break so I don't burn myself out. Especially if it's like a, a decent sized series, right? And this has three games in it. I know there's other games and Phoenix Wright games. I'm not, I'm not going to worry about those just yet. Oh, you saw inside the pink princess outfit? <laughs> That's rude, man. I mean, I, I get it. I've been there. But I get it. Like, it's rude. Um, but yeah, I like to take a little break in between series so I don't get burned out on concepts. I did it with Danganronpa. I did, I did it with Final Fantasy games. I do it with, like, freaking, um, like Trails of Cold Steel. I'll take a pretty big break in between those. Uh, but yeah, no, we're, we'll de they'll definitely will show up on a community pool again. And if not, it'll just definitely show up as a played game because, you know, I like it. But for the future games, like, I don't know if I can... I'm hoping they get remade and put on PC at some point. Or console or... Anything that's not a handheld. Oh, that's a nice picture. Where'd you get that? Yeah, where'd you get the confetti and the sign? Capcom. One day, Betherfire will happen. Hold it. Turn about goodbyes. A brand new episode has been added. Save content? Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to save, and we're going to call it here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, press like below. If you're not subscribed yet, why don't you have my video so I can check out some of the content and see if it's to your liking. Well, once again, thank you for watching. Hope you all have a great day.